Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to make a 212 granny square. Um, so by 212 I mean the first two rounds are in one colour, the third round is in another colour, and then the um, fourth and fifth rounds are in another colour. So it's a three colour granny square. Um, traditionally um, granny squares were used to were made to use up scraps of yarn so it might be that every single round was a different colour and that obviously results in a lot of ends to sew in. What I like about the 212 granny square is you still get multiple colours but you're sewing in uh, less ends. So this is the motif that I've used for my um, fruitful granny square sweater which is a granny square sweater crocheted on the bias. I'll just show you some pictures now. And that sweater was made with um, hand dyed yarn from Fruitful Fusion in the colourways um, City of Bridges. So I used some mini skein sets and um, one um, main colour which is this sort of pinky colour which was in mango. So if you want to find out more about that sweater you can check it out on my website. So this motif comes out about seven centimetres. Um, for this motif I have used a three millimetre hook and a four ply fingering weight yarn. Um, you can use any weight of yarn that you like and corresponding hook size. Um, if you check out my blog post there are some suggestions to different weights of yarn and what hook size you could use and the approximate size of the motif that will result. So let's get started. Um, hopefully I've got enough yarn. I'm using, I'm trying to stay colour coordinated and use the same colours that I used for my um, sweater but I have literally got hardly, I've only got scraps left from that. So let's just, fingers crossed that I've got enough for this video. So we're gonna start off with a slip knot loop on our hook. And then we're going to chain four. And then we're going to join in the first chain to form a ring and we do that by doing a slip stitch so grab the yarn pull it through that chain and through the loop on your hook you should have a nice little ring there now we're going to start off with a chain five and this counts as your first uh, as as a double crochet and a chain two space so it's not actually the first double crochet um, it's the last double crochet of the round but don't worry too much about that right now this is just how I like to do it to conceal this to make this chain less obvious um, and then we're going to put three double crochets into the ring so just in case you've forgotten how to do a double crochet we're going to yarn over we're going to go into the ring we're going to pull up a loop and then we've got three strands of yarn on our hook we're going to yarn over, draw off two, and then we're going to yarn over and draw off two again. And we've made a double crochet. So let's make another two double crochets because we want three. Now we're going to make a corner, which is a chain two, and then another side of our square, which is three double crochets. chain two for another corner and another three double crochets. Now we're going to make the last side, the last corner rather, chain two, the last corner and then the last side. So if you have a quick look at what you've done, you'll see that this first chain that you made Part of it is a corner and part of it is actually uh, going to represent a stitch. So because we've already got one, we just need two 
two double crochets into the ring and then this chain is going to count as our third stitch so we're going to slip stitch into the third chain of our beginning chain three so one two three into there treat the chain just like you would a normal stitch so you're going through the front loop and the back loop and you're going to join with a slip stitch so at the end of round one you should have three at uh, four sets of three double crochet clusters so you got one two three four and you should have four corners each one made up of a chain two one two three four so at this point I would just say um, that this chain five is the traditional way of counting stitches so chain three represents a um, double crochet what I find um, with this however is it leaves one corner significantly bigger than the others and this is might not apply to you and if your square looks absolutely fine and you're happy with that then you will just continue to use a chain five at the start of every round if however like me the gauge of your chain is slightly different um, com in comparison to your normal stitches and you end up with this big hole what you might want to consider is a different start to each round and it's really easy it's hardly any different all you're going to do is a chain four instead of a chain five so I'm just going to undo one of those chains so I've got one two three four chain four at the start of the round and then the same exactly the same the rest of the round is exactly the same you've got three double crochet chain two three double crochet chain two, three double crochet, I'm catching the tail end in as I go, you don't have to do that and if you find it too much to think about but it does save a bit of a job and then the last side I'm doing two, two double crochets and then I'm still joining into the third chain one two three with a slip stitch but my corners are much more even looking. So you only need to do that if you have the same problem as me. If not, carry on with the chain five at the beginning of each round. Let's start round two. We're going to slip stitch into this first corner space. And then you're going to either chain four or chain five, whichever one looks best for your style of crochet. So I'm doing a chain four. Now I'm going to do three double crochets into the same corner space. In the next corner space, I'm going to do three double crochet. Chain two for a corner and another three double crochet in exactly the same corner space. So what you should have in this corner is three double crochets, chain two, three double crochet. And we're going to do exactly the same thing in the next two corners. Three lots of double crochet. chain two for the corner three lots of double crochet same in the next corner I've just caught a bit of um, split the yarn there I think I'm going to have enough yarn yes Chain two and another three double crochet. I'm going to finish off the last corner by going back into that first chain two space and putting two double crochets and then joining with a slip stitch into the third chain of 
the beginning chain four. One, two, three, treat it like a normal stitch through both loops of the chain. Grab the yarn, pull it through, and then also pull it through the loop on the hook. And now we're just going to trim that off. You can leave a longer tail map if you like. I always have a very short tail so that I'm not wasting my beautiful hand dyed yarn. So, at the end of round two, you should have two sets of three double close uh, three double crochet clusters on each side one two two on that side two on that side two on that side each corner should have a chain two space should have four of those and that's what your little motif whoop, should look like at the end of this round Let's start round three. So start, I like to just, I don't like to start in the same corner where I've finished because I think the eye gets drawn to the very slight difference at the start of an end of the round. So when I'm working these granny squares, I like to just systematically start the new color in the next corner along, just to make sure there's a distribution of um, the starts. So I'm going to join colour B which is this lovely mango colourway from Fruitful Fusion and um, you can join the yarn however you like. Um, my preferred method is just to hold a bit of a tail at the back at the point where I want to join and then literally pull up a loop and I'm still holding the end of that so it doesn't come undone and then I'm going to start the round um, and that end will get sewn in later on. I just don't like um, having a knot or a lump or a lump there. So let's start the round we're going to, you, so you're going to either chain four or chain five depending on which you prefer the look of. One, two, three, four, I'm going to do chain four. If there's a bit tangled up so I don't know how we're going to get on. Hopefully it'll be all right. And now I'm going to start back in, go back into that corner, and I'm going to do three double crochets. Two, three. And now, as is traditional with a granny square, with a traditional granny square, um, you never actually crochet into the stitches, you crochet between the stitches. So I'm going to skip these three double crochets and I'm going to make another three double crochet cluster in between these two, in, in that space. So I'm not going into a stitch, I'm going into a space. So I'm going to do three double crochets in there. And I'm going to make another corner, which if you remember, is three double crochet, chain two, Three double crochet. This is going to be a problem. I should have wound it into a nice ball. Chain two, three double crochet. Leap. So that's three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. And the next side stitch is the same as the previous, so we're going to skip three. We're going to go in this space between those two sets of clusters from the previous round. So three double crochet into there. Next corner is three double crochets. chain two, three double crochets. Next side is three double crochets between the two clusters from the previous round. 
next corner I'm actually going to fold this tail end over so that I catch it in you can probably guess three double crochets chain two three double crochets last side three double crochets between the two clusters from the previous round. Now let's finish off this last corner or the first corner rather. So we're going to put two more stitches into that first corner and then we're going to find the third chain so this twisted round a bit at the front where I've caught it in there but that's fine, I remember to count that one, two, three if you're struggling to count from the bottom up, you can also count backwards so you know that that is a proper stitch. Um, if you're doing a chain five, you can count the two chains there and then crochet into the next stitch. If you've got a chain four, you've got your proper stitch, one stitch, so your chain three is the second stitch along. Now I'm going to fasten that off. I'm going to yarn over and pull through that tail end to fasten off. So, at the end of round three, whoop, you should have um, one, two, three sets of three double crochet clusters on each side. And then one, two, three, four, chain two spaces. Now let's do rounds four and five, which are both in the same color. So I'm going to join this yarn in the next corner along from where I ended the previous round. So I'm going to go in this corner. I'm going to get yarn color C, or the third color, hold a tail end at the back, pull up a loop or join however you like and then chain four or five depending on your preference and again three double crochet into corner and now we're going to put three double crochets three double crochet clusters between each of these clusters from the previous round so we've got to put three there and then three there skip three go into that space one two three into the next space one two three now we're going to make another corner, which you should be familiar with now. We're doing three double crochets, chain two, and three double crochets, all in the same corner space. Another side. cluster of three between the two from the previous round, skip three and do the same again. Now we're going to do another corner, three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet And so I'm going to continue along in that same way, putting a cluster of three between each from previous round and then a corner of three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. And um, I'll meet you back when I come back round to the beginning. So I'm just doing the last set of clusters on the side here, on the last side, and I'm going to finish off this first corner. So as I said, don't worry if you've using the same method as me to start 
join the yarn and it's a bit loose like that it doesn't really matter because you can sew that in so I'm now going to do two double crochet into my first corner I'm going to find my third double crochet one two three treat it like a normal stitch and slip stitch into there now we're not going to fasten off this time um, because we're going to do a uh, round the last round with the same colour so let's just take stock of what we've done this round so you should have one two three four sets of three double crochet clusters on each side one two three four one two three four one two three four and then in each corner I've got a chain two space one two three four great Let's start round five. We're going to slip stitch into this first corner space. We're going to chain four or five, depending on your preference. And then we're going to put three double crochet into the same corner. And now you've guessed we're going to put three double crochet between each of these sets of clusters from the previous round four. This colour is really, really beautiful. I don't know if you can see the teals, the blues, the greens. Really beautiful. So that's one side done. Got three sets of three double crochet clusters, and I'm going to do another corner, which is the same um, as for all the previous rounds. Three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet, and another side. Putting a three double crochet between each set of clusters from the previous round. So you should be pretty familiar now with um, the general formula for each row. So I'm going to go ahead now and move along to the end of this row and I'll meet you there. Just finishing off this last side. Now I'm going to finish off this last corner, two double crochets into the first space where I started and slip stitch into the third chain of my beginning chain, four or five depending which one you've used, one, two, three, slip stitch join. Cut the yarn, pull through, and this is what it should look like at the end of round five. So you have got one, two, three, four, five sets of um, three double crochet clusters. On each side, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. And then you have got a chain two corner space in each four of the four corners. Now you just need to sew in your ends. I'm going to particularly take care of these ones where I've um, joined the start of the row by just holding the tail end. So I'm going to make sure that those are very secure by going one way into that clustered area. And then I've only got a short end, so I'm going to use the eye of the needle. I'm going to go back the other way, I'm going to catch in. catch in a stitch so I'm not just completely undoing that That's what I've just done 
and that will be nice and secure now. I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of these and I'll come back to you when I've finished. So here we are. Um, all the ends are sewn in. I haven't sewn this last end in because um, I prefer sewing the very last end in once it's been joined or I've done whatever I've done because there's not really anywhere to sew this in. I mean you could go travel down along the chain and go into that bit but um, I'm assuming we're going to be joining multiple motifs so I like to leave that one till last. So I mean this hasn't even been blocked and I think it looks pretty good. Anyway I hope you enjoyed that. If you um, try out my um, 212 granny square or you even have a go at making the sweater please do let me know. I absolutely love to see what um, people are doing or whether you've used any of my tips or patterns. Um, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this post, um, make sure you're signed up for notifications. You can also go to my website and on any of my posts you can sign up for my newsletter, um, which is another place you can keep up to date with all the new things I'm doing, um, courses I'm running, videos and patterns that I'm releasing. Thank you.